hated that. I felt it was a waste of time. You know, I mean, and that was, that was my experience. Like, it compared nothing to the fact that, you know, I learned HTML and CSS and all these things on my own because I was interested and driven. And when I got into formalized education, it was you will do this, this, and this, and here's how you will prove it. When I could think of a thousand different ways and a thousand different things, that would be more useful for my time. And it certainly didn't take into account any of my skills prior to that. I think a lot of this goes back to scale and the organization of scale. So if we decide this is what must be taught to all people in the same way, then we end up alienating big chunks of people. So one of the advantages of being the coordinator of the conference is that you get to get the mic whenever you want. Um, <laughs> so I'm jumping in. And I just wanted to follow up because you did mention, um, I want to talk about this motivation factor. And you did mention the DS-106 thing. And you know, from my very limited experience in teaching that this semester, one of the things that really shocked me, one of the assignments Jim and I did at the end of the semester was that we asked students to write a letter to future students of the class offering advice of how to succeed in this class, because it is a kind of non-traditional class. And, and most everybody got and expressed very well how this class was different and, and why it was different. But it didn't feel at all that any of them went away from it expecting that that was something they should ever expect to encounter again. <laughs> it was like, well, this class was different, and let me tell you why, and let me tell you how you ha need to approach it, because it's different. But it wasn't like, okay, this has changed the game for me, or I'm, I'm now going into my future classes with a different perspective on this. And I found that sort of interesting and a little, a little depressing. Yeah. But. The bar has been lowered, <laughs> and it is hard to raise it, you know, in terms of expectations with education. I'd say that without question. And I think after that, we probably are out of time, since I did jump in front of you. <laughs> I had an interesting conversation with a biology professor recently who was studying the K-12 SOLs because I do community-based learning with faculty. And he has his students, um, college students, prepare things to work with with the K-12 students. And so we pick certain SOLs out for our students to design things around. And in looking at the SOLs said, well, this is all stuff that we teach the students again when they get here in their intro bio courses. That's kind of weird. And I, so I was thinking to myself, I heard some people using the language of tests that are testing knowledge at a point in time. And it made me think about the fact that in a way we're assuming they're going to forget that stuff because it's knowledge dump. We put it in short-term memory for these tests. They, they specifically do these reviews and cram sessions the weeks right before the SOLs. Then the students dump it out onto those SOL tests, and we assume that they're going to forget that information. So I just wanted to put this out there as a way, because I haven't heard people making this argument very much yet. Why would we be um, letting people get away with that as, why are we not asking the question about long-term retention? of information and making that one of the criteria for what is attaining knowledge. I'm, I don't know, are you hearing any of that kind of talk? Because that might be one way we could start to undermine the whole kind of uh, system as it's set up. Yeah, it's a, an awesome point. And I don't think I've seen anything like that either. I mean, what I'd encourage you to do is, is you know, get into your schools. I mean, you can go observe a class. Um, Especially right now, it's SOL prep time, you know, the next couple of weeks. And go see what happens during SOL prep time. See if that's how you want your children or your students being prepared for, for the future that you kind of plan. Um, I think it'll provide a pretty powerful picture in most cases. So. Well, I want to thank you, Tom, again. That was great. And um, <laughs> it's really great. I, this is the first time we've ever had somebody speak at Faculty Academy from uh, K-12, and I'm really really pleased that we managed to do that this year because I think having these conversations is really important about, about the two different cultures and where they do need to be conversing more. So thank you. Um, we are, I don't know if this, we are taking a quick break uh, for 15 minutes and then we have our last concurrent session of the day, um, which includes a workshop by Amanda French on Omeka, um, which will be in 124. That'll be more of kind of a hands-on thingy. Yes. Um, so I encourage you to check that out.